Oh hi, this is Paul Long. Um, we're in very difficult times at the moment, so I hope you understand this is a very rough and ready put together video. Um, just to show you how to install uh, the resources that I've provided um, that you can use free of charge um, up until um, September 2020 or until uh, the schools go back, whichever is later. Um, it's the least I can do in, uh, uh, to make sure that you've got some home learning available. So you'll have uh, received an email from me uh, with some links in. One will be a OneDrive link, the other is a Google Drive link. This gives uh, different options um, if things don't work. Uh, when you follow that link, you'll see some README files. Please do download these files and, and read them. Uh, this one here has got the installation instructions as a PowerPoint. Um, this one talks about how to use them. This is just something about some video compatibility issues that you might get uh, and how to overcome them. Um, uh, this one is just a general readme file with some general information you need to know uh, and, and this just tells you a bit about what happen if things don't work in Edge, uh, sorry not in Edge, uh, with OneDrive. So basically you'll see there's three folders here. Um, so I choose the folder that I want. Uh, so for example, I'm going to go for AQA PDF right hand click on it and I'll select download. Okay, it's then just a, a bit of a waiting game to wait for that uh, file to download. Now at the moment you can see that uh, I'm logged in, I'm logged on as um, a temporary email address that I've set up. Uh, the reason is because if you're logged on using your school email account or any uh, kind of business account or organisational account, then when you right hand click you won't see the download option. So what I've done is I've logged out of my organisational account and I've logged into um, a different account in order for that to, to be able to download. So you could always do it from home using your own personal email account or you could just log on using an email account at school. However, your email um, instructions will also have uh, a Google Drive link. So this is another option and another way that we can do it. Um, so what did we download on the other one? It was AQA. So on this one I'm going to download um, Edexcel. Uh, so I'm just going to right hand click uh, on there and we select download and we're going to wait for the uh, download to finish. So at this point I'm going to uh, pause the video. Okay, so I'm just back after a little pause now. We can see um, that the Edexcel one is open. I'm using the Firefox browser for this. It works differently in every single browser. Uh, I can either save that file um, or I can open that file directly. So I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, open the file um, and click on OK. I don't know why the OK button didn't come up the first time, but it's coming up second time. Uh, so once I've opened that file, um, I'll have a, a zip file opened and it's it gone. Oh, nothing ever worked when you want it to, does it? Um, we'll try that again in a minute then. Okay, so um, that just took a little time to open on my computer. That was all that was uh, happening there. So here's the downloaded folder. Um, Firefox puts things in a completely different place to anything else. Um, so if I go into uh, Edit Excel PDF, you'll see there's a number of files there. Uh, so I'm just going to go back and I'm going to bring over here, this is a folder I've set up on my computer. Uh, I've just put it on my desktop, but this would be where you want the files to be available to your students. So, uh, or it might just be somewhere temporary where you're going to put them before you upload them to your uh, VLE. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just drag that across. Uh, that will unzip the file and then the folders are ready for you to have a look at. Now you can give these instructions to your students as well because they can download this stuff from home. Um, so if you want to give them access to this so they can download it at home and they then don't have to keep going onto the VLE. It also means the hyperlinks within the documents will work. Um, so feel free to let them watch this, um, this video. I've hidden all the uh, Google links and everything but you can always give them their Google links if you need to. I'd prefer it if you provided it on your own Google Drive or your OneDrive um, but in uh, these difficult times you know then then uh, yeah give them access if they need to. Uh, so let's just have a look at Edge see if that's finished downloading. Uh, it hasn't done so we'll 
Just pause there and I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, so this is the um, OneDrive um, download and uh, I've got an option here to either directly open the file. Um, this is in Edge, uh, so I haven't done it in Chrome on purpose because most people use Chrome so they know what to do in that. I can either open the file directly, I can show it in the folder. Uh, if I show it in folder, it will come into my downloads folder um, because Microsoft Edge does put it into the correct folder. So there we can see it. Uh, so I've got this zip file, so I'll open the zip file uh, and then I just need uh, the folder where I want to install it to. So if I'm uh, downloading the AQA uh, stuff, I've just got to create a new folder this time um, because it didn't create uh, its own folder like uh, Firefox did. I oh, don't you love that not responding message? Uh, right, here we go. So new folder. Uh, I'm just going to call it AQ, AQA. Uh, it doesn't matter what goes at the end. Um, so go into there and now I can extract all of these files just by literally copying them across okay, and that is the whole AQA resource copied. Right, so that's copying over now. Uh, it's still copying the Edexcel files as well so uh, we'll just pause for a little bit and I'll come back once they've finished um, copying. Okay, so I'm back. I've got a bit of a cleaner desktop now. Um, so this is the AQA folder. So we copied everything into the AQA folder. And you can see now that this is just um, a document that you get at the beginning of a textbook normally. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, but this index.html page here, if I go into this uh, and we open that up, um, let's open it in um, Edge because I haven't got much open in that at the moment. Um, so here we go uh, and what this will do is it takes you through each chapter um, so all, all, all this file does basically is open each of these folders uh, and then opens the, the PDF file that's in, inside that folder so for example if I go to chapter 3 data representation it's now going to open up the PDF document uh, that is for, for that chapter uh, and so if I scroll down you can see how you can work your way through the uh, textbook I can click on here and it'll take me straight to uh, a section within the book and I can click on an activity and as you can see it's now downloading the activity that's linked uh, I'll open that file and uh, what we can do at this stage is this is perfect these little activities here for you to to set as assignments for students because you can set it as an assignment and it in, send it back either through Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams uh, and then you've got access uh, to the answers that are given you, you can mark it for them or you can also send the answers because I'll show you how to um, access the answers as well in a moment and they can self-assess it um, which is probably going to be more appropriate uh, uh, during these times. Um, so let's go back, let's have a look at some other things that we've got here, so there's more activities there these are question templates um, so if I click on this document here uh, so this will open up a question template for answering uh, exam style questions um, now this section here is quite a simple section um, so they're, they're not particularly complicated questions um, but we'll have a quick look and see uh, what it looks like Oh, my computer's running really slowly at the moment. Right, there we go. So, they've got the questions and they've got space to give the answers. Uh, okay, so this is rather uh, quite, um, quite a simple uh, part of a, a chapter. There is some, obviously some quite much more complicated stuff. Um, here we're going into binary addition. We've got examples that you can show to the stu students. Uh, we link stuff to maths as well, so explaining how that works with um, the decimal numbering system. And uh, you'll find that there are then links to videos. Um, so if I click on this link here, it'll take me to a video from Khan Academy. And uh, I, I'm not going to uh, leave this What's playing. Like to add multi-digit numbers in binary. So so let's say I have the number one, zero, one, one, and to that, 
add, I wanted to add the number one. Okay, so I'm not gonna leave that playing because it's somebody else's video, somebody else's copyright. Um, but you, when you click on that link, you are literally clicking to a YouTube um, link. And uh, so it is, it is a publicly available uh, document anyway. Uh, but it it's, um, it just makes it easier, but you can just access it straight from here. So you can see like you've got a whole chapter here. So each each book is laid out, each chapter is laid out as its own separate um, book, with its own separate content page. It's then broken down into sections, and at the end of each section, you'll see the purple bit, uh, which is the questions, the exam style questions. And, and you saw earlier, we click on that follow link. You've got your activities here. Um, and you've got further on down let's have a look what else we've got some more questions we've got examples okay so the examples in these brown bits um, and I think that's pretty much the so we saw some math stuff didn't we that was in red earlier um, so that's pretty much a sort of like the, the sort of range of things that are available here you'll find that when you go into some of the examples there might be links um, uh, you, this is some stuff on sampling, so you can see this is like a little bit more complex. Uh, but let's have a look at the folder structure so you can see how that actually works. Because it may be that sometimes you find the hyperlinks uh, don't work once you've installed it on your uh, VLE. Um, so if the hyperlinks aren't working, well, let's go and have a look at that chapter 3 that we were just looking at. Um, so although this is AQA, it's all the same for OCR. Um, so I go in there and you'll see now I've got a number of different folders. Okay, so first of all, um, this PDF file here, uh, this is um, what we were just looking at, so that is the actual textbook itself. This answers to questions uh, file. Uh, this is the one uh, where you get all the answers to the exam style questions. So you may want to go through deleting those um, before making everything available to students um, but this folder here yeah uh, the presentations um, folder okay if we go into here this is where we've got all the presentations for the chapter now this is what i would suggest you use for home learning um, so let's take um, uh, representing images for example uh, so we'll open up this presentation um, now we're going to have a little bit of difficulty with this I think um, in that you uh, when I show this uh, we're going to lose the top and the bottom of each slide um, because I've only selected part of my screen um, but these animations work best if you are showing them uh, as a slideshow not trying to work through them one by one because if you work through them one by one you miss all the animations um, so if we start right from the beginning, and I'll present that as a slideshow, um, and yeah, you can see just, just um, at the top of the screen here, you, you can just see there's a bit missing. You probably, you, you won't be able to notice it um, much yourselves. Um, but if I go to the next slide, yeah, you can notice the title missing now. Um, so let's say we wanted to look at um, representing black and white bitmaps. We could click on here, but I'm just going to go for bitmaps for now. And we'll have a look at that and it goes into the bitmap section okay now the, here it guides the students as to which part of the textbook to read um, so if i click on this it's going to open um, the chapter three um, section of the textbook tells the students which pages to go to 35 to 36. i've never found a way of uh, getting it to go directly to the exact pages i want so if anybody does know how to do that uh, I can do it in Word, but I can't do it uh, on a PDF. Um, so if anybody knows how to do that, please do let me know. To, I'd love for my next edition to be able to go straight to the pages. Um, but I can go here now, look, there's page 35. So I'll click on here, and it's saying, read pages 35 to um, 36 about bitmap size. So this is a bit about bitmap size here. So it's directing the students to read this little bit. Okay, and that's where they finish because then there's uh, an activity. Okay, so we move on to the next slide, uh, and we're just going through some stuff here. This is just some very basic things about uh, width and height, resolution. I know in OCR it's not called resolution, um, so uh, in the OCR slides it will be different. 
and you know, here come in some animations just to help students to understand exactly what we're talking about and these aren't particularly elaborate animations these ones but uh, have a look at some of the other stuff particularly with programming and trace tables and you'll see the animations are quite uh, detailed on there and uh, really do help in understanding uh, in fact I'll try and get one in a minute and now it's telling us about the bitmap size um, being 16 times 8 and that being 128 pixels and now we get to a bit where students are going to do an activity so again they can click on this link if the links don't work uh, I'll show you how you actually uh, get to the activities without using the links and that has now opened up that activity um, file for them to, to do uh, so that's uh, nice and straightforward for them uh, and then we'll continue on through the presentation we've got some more textbook reading uh, and then some information about colour depth okay, and it's looking at uh, this, oh, I, I will just uh, skip through this quickly uh, so I want to get to a bit where there's a video this is talking about um, uh, when we're using four colours and how we can use 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 a bit depth of 2 and then we can look at the example and how that would be looked at as a, a string of binary numbers ok uh, and there's some questions that the students have answered. Remember these presentations are meant for teacher delivery but uh, in these difficult times you can uh, you know this is possibly the, the best option you're going to get as an alternative. Um, you are welcome to do a voiceover with these if you want and if you want to send me a voiceover please do if I like them I'll put them on my YouTube, YouTube channel but I just ask that you don't put them on any public YouTube channels yourself um, just to protect my copyright uh, in the long term. Um, so let's uh, let's see if we can find um, a, a video. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got a video on this one, so I've probably not chosen the uh, the best of uh, presentation. So I'm actually going to come out of this one uh, and find one where I, I know I've definitely got some uh, videos. There'll be something in binary arithmetic. So let's have a look at that one. Um, to show you how the videos are embedded into the uh, presentation themselves um, so we'll go down they're all colour coded so here's one here um, so I'll put this into full screen mode and okay we, we, are, we have got the, the bit at the top just cut off a little bit uh, but if I click on the, uh, the video it will play now because I'm doing a screen recording it's uh, just playing up a little bit and it's not doing it the way I want it to do. Um, uh, it, it does normally work when I click on play. Uh, if you have any difficulty getting the video to play, then click on this binary add uh, or with this hyperlink here. Um, there's always a hyperlink at the bottom of each one saying where they've come from. Uh, and that they're embedded in terms of linked to the YouTube site or wherever I've got them from. Um, they haven't actually been downloaded because if I've downloaded them that would be obviously against copyright um, so you do still need an internet connection to actually uh, watch the, the, the video uh, now my point is not really want uh, allow me to end the show so let's do it a different way okay um, so that was the presentations and uh, that's that I, I would say is a starting point for everything for your students to be doing um, giving them one presentation a day uh, would I, I would say would or per lesson um, maybe a couple if they're nice and easy ones and you've got a reasonable amount of work. Just going back um, to uh, the uh, documents that we had, I'm trying just trying to find them and I've lost them now. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so. Um, just here, this one here. If you do have problems playing the videos that we were just looking at, this explains what to do to make uh, PowerPoint uh, compatible. Okay, so um, it just sort of there are some settings and some uh, ways PowerPoint has been set up that will stop it from working properly. So let's have a look at the other folders that we've got. Okay, so all the activities. Uh, so you saw the hyperlinks and the blue boxes. All the activities are here. So you can find all the activities in here. You'll find that there are other things as well available that um, link within those activities and there might be a hyperlink to them. Um, so you, this uh, little sound waves that I've created myself. Um, 
this random number generator I've created myself. It's um, really useful if you just want to set more and more um, conversion exercises. So, for example, doing binary to deanery conversion, binary to hex, uh, this random number generator will do is generate those random numbers for you. If I go to hex, uh, or better click on enable editing, let me use hyperlink there. It's gone onto my other screen, let me just bring it back. There we go, so click on hex, there we go, uh, and I've got a whole load of random hex numbers. Okay, go back to my menu, click on binary, a whole load of random binary numbers. So you can just say, students, right, just find a few, okay, uh, and if I press F9, it'll just refresh the screen, you can just get in uh, loads, loads more that are, are new, okay? Um, so you can use that to, to get students using binary, hex, decimal. Uh, you could be saying to them, right, you know, just take the first two, add them up, take the first three, add them up. There's all sorts of things that you can do with this. Uh, convert this to hex, convert this to decimal, um, and, and so on. And it just, just gives them lots of random uh, numbers to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to select the, uh, we won't bother saving that. Um, if we have a look at uh, activities answers folder, so this might be want, want to be something you want to delete um, for students, but it's got answers to all the um, tasks that have been set. So if we have a look at this one, which is about converting uh, a decimal to binary, uh, and it should show the activity sheet that the students have had, and then it will show answers. Uh, in most cases, they have the definitive answers. Some cases will always be, it will often be suggestive answers. Um, but this is just using one particular method of, of doing it. Okay, there are other methods of doing decimal to binary, uh, but that has just given an example of how a student may have done one of them, um, but they may have used other methods because a different method is shown in the book. But here's all your answers. Um, save you working them out yourself and uh, you know uh, wasting a lot of time doing it for yourself. Okay, so let's have a look at what else we've got. We've then got examples. Um, so here, uh, the, within the book, there'll be things that are linked to in terms of examples, uh, or activities might use examples. Uh, so there's some stuff like about different types of images. So for example, I've got these reptiles that are used to show the difference between color depths. And so these are the original pictures that I've used. This is a photograph I, I took on holiday. Um, and uh, there's some music files here, which are, are all different um, bit depths um, and sample rates uh, and so on. So, so these are all the files where anything that's referenced in an example, you'll find those files. Uh, and then the question templates. So if we go into here, okay, these are the question templates. Uh, so this is what the student uses to answer the questions. We saw them earlier. Um, and they're the, the pink uh, parts of the book. And they'll be uh, uh, sort of pinky purple, same in, in the Word document as well. And basically you've got a set of uh, exam style questions um, which students can answer here. These are very basic ones, which is why they start with what and why uh, rather than anything else. Um, so that was um, an example from here. I just want to go back to the presentations actually because uh, one of the uh, best things you'll find is, uh, and I think it's in the binary arithmetic, um, there's actually some flash uh, stuff in there. So not flash stuff, visual basic for applications, um, things in there which makes the adding up the binary numbers interactive. So you can actually try different binary numbers and as you put them in, uh, it will uh, it will do it for you. But actually, I've got no. It's it's not it's it's not the addition, and it must be the conversion. Um, but one 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 of them has got the the conversion in. Let's have a look at it under converting between number bases. Um, uh, and there's some pretty nifty ones here where you can actually put in direct into the PowerPoint what you want your binary number to be, and then it will give you your real time. Uh, hex conversion, for example. Uh, so we'll just have a look, see if I can find one. 
Um, so, here we go, interactive binary table. So, um, I have to enable editing in order to use it. Okay, and what we can do, we can see here, oh, well, we'll uh, do that, we'll enable the content. Okay, so what I can do here, it will let me. Sorry about that. Um, I'll tell you why it's not working. Uh, we all make mistakes, don't we? It's not in show mode. Okay, so if I put it into show mode, right, we can now uh, actually change these. So I can put uh, my numbers in here. What happens if I don't want to put two in, do I? Um, uh, but we'll put some numbers in. So here's my binary number. Okay, I click on calculate, and it gives us our answer of 200. Um, so that's just something that's uh, quite nifty uh, for demonstrating that. I'm just going to show you um, uh, something more related to programming and algorithms so you can see how that works and it will give you a bit of example of more of the interactive presentations. Uh, so we'll have a look at uh, programming uh, and we're going to have a look at some uh, loops. Uh, so if I can uh, find them, it will be under, it must be under programming uh, concepts for AQA, I work with AQA, OCR and Edit itself, so they all all have different ones. Um, so I, I, basically, I, I, do you know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm being silly really, because what I ought to do is show the presentation and then I can just skip straight to the section that I want. Um, so uh, we can have a look at some iteration. Yeah, we can have a look at some of the uh, animations and how Okay, so that's basic animated text. Um, let's just get to some stuff here. So here we go, we've got a for loop. Okay, so we've got some explanations that are coming up, showing students uh, what the bits do. And then showing us what our variables are, showing us how the for loop will work through, starting with counter at one. Okay, and we've got our output here, right? So we've got our output screen. I know you can't see it all. I can tell on my screen that, um, that it's cut off the top of the number one. Um, and then counter goes up to two, and our output is two. Counter goes up to three, and the output is three, and so on. Okay, and then it tells us that the loop stops once it gets to the ending value of five. So these are sort of animations that are there to help um, students, okay? We've uh, done, done a little uh, scratch equivalent as well. And now let's look at how it works in a flowchart. Okay, so it's showing us how the counter starts at one, how we output it, counter increments by one. Okay, we're looking to see if it's reached five or not. It hasn't, so we keep going. And you can see the output being displayed here. I clicked on those um, quite quickly just to get through it. Um, uh, but it, once we get to uh, some nested loops and stuff, we'll find that you'll find that the animations uh, go even further and uh, help us help help the students out quite a lot. Uh, I just want to show you a trace table um, animation as well. So, uh, oh, no, chapter one for AQA, I believe the trace tables will be in. Uh, and it's going to be under, um, I think it's uh, representing algorithms. Uh, we'll double check and see. As I say, apologies, this is rough and ready. I just want to get stuff out to you as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, so yeah, there's our trace table there. So we'll run this uh, and click on this bit that says about trace table. Okay. And uh, we'll just skip through the first couple the slides um, but here we go okay so this is uh, how I suggest students use trace tables I suggest that they tick off each line as they go along okay so we've got an output uh, asking us to input a length and now we have a user input 
and it's explaining that the user's input six, so we can put six into our table. You can see here now how the animations are really helping. Uh, we can input a width of eight, uh, then we can go on calculate the area. Right, so the area is calculated as six times eight, which is 48. Uh, and then we get our perimeter, uh, which is worked out, as you can see from the calculation before. Um, so that was a, a nice straightforward one. Here is just a, an idea of one way of doing a trace table using line numbers. So I, each time the line, there's a new line, I can put in the values. So in the first line, X and Y had values. In the second line, it's just A. There's lots of different ways of doing trace tables. This is just one of them using line numbers. My, my pre preferred method uh, is a mixture of this uh, and when you go through a loop, each time you go through, through a loop, start a new line in the trace table, uh, which we will have somewhere. Um, so um, this is just showing how you can go through an if then else and you don't have to go through every line um, and I'll, I'll skip through this bit okay because it's the same sort of process because uh, what I do really want to do is show you uh, an iteration example um, and there'll be an array example as well so it show all the students how to do it so this is just explaining to students what to do let's have um, uh, a look at this one so this is very basic uh, uh, one we just just set oh there goes my uh, um, alarm on my phone <laughs> right so setting the um, result to be a value of one so we'll put that in there and uh, if y is greater than zero then we go into our for loop now what we're going to do with our for loop um, uh, with this we've got to go from one through to y so what we're actually going to do is start a new line uh, for each iteration uh, of the loop okay so one is the first one two is the second one okay then i goes to three so i'm going to do a new line and then i goes to four now it's, i think it's always good practice to do that because then anything that goes on within each loop you can have all on one line and it just helps you to uh, keep track of everything that's going on um, this is just the uh, trace table which is just showing how you can actually uh, keep track of the um, what's going on each iteration so basically instead of ticking each line off as I go along I'm just putting the number one in uh, and then the second iteration and I'm putting the number two in but you can see here everything to do with the first iteration has been kept together everything with the second iteration has been kept together it's just one of my things that I, I find um, helps students so that is a very very quick uh, whistle stop tour of uh, the, the presentations uh, and how to use them. If you are using Edexcel, um, uh, this is uh, something where you, that you need to be aware of. You, with Edexcel, you need to use the presentations um, from AQA and OCR. Um, sorry about this, but uh, they haven't been produced uh, to match um, uh, the Edexcel uh, textbook. There are three chapters that are specific to the Edexcel textbook. So like you've got chapter one, which is problem solving. Um, you'll see that the presentation folder is empty, I'm afraid. That's why you need to use the, uh, the one from uh, OCR or uh, AQA. Um, but the, uh, the, the reason chapters one and two have been done is because Edexcel pseudocode is, is so different. Uh, and so for example, if we go and have a look at uh, a binary search and although students don't need to know the pseudocode for binary search uh, this textbook does provide lots and lots of opportunities for extension work uh, and so this is this is extension work for your top ability students to think about how it might go but you can see here that that I've used the edit cell pseudocode instead of um, OCRs or AQAs uh, so I've done that for chapters one and two and chapter six wasn't um, too much effort to change over. I ran out of time basically um, and with the change to the new specifications I'm having to focus on upgrading everything um, and Edexcel will probably be the first one that I get ready um, uh, in time for September uh, because Edexcel is going to be using Python so everything in the book is going to be Python based uh, and I'll be providing uh, Python files to go with it as well uh, and, and so on. 
So uh, hopefully that's everything that you need. I might do some other shorter video tutorials um, or something to go along with stuff. Um, do feel free to use this with your students. Remember to tell them that they can download the whole lot themselves. So if you put it on your Google Drive, they can then click on the, um, uh, the, the folder, right and click on it, download it and put it onto a folder on their own devices. Uh, even if it's a mobile phone, it will do it on a mobile phone or tablet as well because they're using um, file systems uh, and they'll be able to open uh, all of this up and, and use the hyperlinks um, or they can put it onto their laptop computer or, or desktop computer or whatever they're, they're doing. You can also print out the pages um, from the textbook. So uh, if the stuff that you're doing where you need to print it, I know it's a bit late now at um, Friday afternoon, which is when I've recorded this. Um, but at least you'll have some stuff available that you can um, give out to students or it might be that you have collection points for printouts or other students can print them for each other uh, while working from home or of course if you've got the key worker children in school and you want to print stuff for them to be able to do you can print out any of those activity sheets you can print out any of the pages from the textbook um, there, there's no limit to how this is used as long as it's within your own institution um, so I hope the next um, couple of months go well for you, um, it's not too stressful, I hope this has taken a lot of stress out of things being able to use this. Um, uh, I do have a, a, um, a friend who, colleague who runs test and track.io which would be useful for Key Stage 3, uh, it's a different type of learning platform. Uh, and it uh, tracks students as they go along so it might be worth having a look at that for the future um, and when we do return to school if you've liked using this um, please please do consider placing an order um, I'll, I'll drop you an email um, when, when that comes to the time and see if you want to or not but there's no obligation to carry on uh, I, I won't be chasing you afterwards I'll just be asking that you delete the uh, resources if you choose not to to buy it uh, in the long term. Um, just so you know, um, I'm self-employed, um, so I probably won't have much of an income over the next uh, couple of months. Um, so I'm gonna be having to do lots of things that are going to hopefully uh, generate income in the future uh, rather than uh, at the present. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be difficult times for us all. Uh, I hope you're all well and when you do get the uh, coronavirus so i hope it's not too bad and uh, you recover quickly god bless and uh, uh, enjoy <laughs>